Last time I, I preached on this, we were uh, looking at the four soils. The Word of God is the seed that is scattered, and it, uh, we, the sower just sows the seed, and it finds the, the soil that is receptive. The four hearts, the, the hard heart, where the Word of God can't penetrate. The heart that is, is more shallow, it doesn't have any depth. So when the seed finds it, it sprouts up and grows, but it cannot take the temperature of the world, and it simply falls away. And then we find uh, there is the uh, the one that was the seed that found the, the the soil that was crowded with other weeds, and and when the word found it, it found its rightful place, it it the, it sprouted and grew, but the distractions, the other things, choked it out, and it died. The fourth soil was obviously the one that was the good soil, receptive soil. Could take it in, and it would be the fullness of everything that the seed could produce. 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. How many of y'all have aspirations for 100-fold? We have a desire that when the Word of God comes into our life, we are receptive to it. We are open to it. We are eager for what God can do in our life. And we're just simply blessed to have the Word of God come in and take us and teach us and use us. And, and, and that God would so desire to put Himself in and through us in great things. Y'all like that? Great things can happen. We're so amazed by that. So we're going to continue on in this. Now, in Matthew's account of this, he tells us of seven parables. When Mark brings this along, he doesn't mention all those, but he mentions some that Matthew doesn't really uh, bring to light. And, and it's really a kind of how Mark is trying to bring something to, to make a point. All of God's words are great. Amen? And they all have a rightful place in our heart. But Mark says, this is the thing that, that I think that we need to hear if we don't hear we're going to be losers on this. We're going to lose out on all that God could do. Now, we all want to be winners. We all want to be tender in God's hands. We all have an opportunity. We just don't all take that opportunity. It's there. Who did Jesus die for? For God so loved that He gave His only begotten Son. That how many are the whosoever? Praise God, amen, and hallelujah. Y'all okay with the whosoever? Believes in Him, shall not, like that seed that choked out and it, it perished, but have what? I'm good with everlasting life as long as it's with Him. Right? So here we see this come together. If you will, would you stand with me in honor of reading God's Word? We're going to just read a part of it. But in Mark chapter 4, we're going to begin reading in verse number 21. Also he said to them, Is a lamp brought to be put under a basket or under a bed? It is not to be set on a lampstand. Is it not to be set on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it shall come to light. If anyone has ears, that includes us today. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Then he said to him, now take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. That's not my words. That's the words of the living God who speaks truth, who speaks blessing. May we hear today. Let's pray. Now, Lord, as we highlight you, as we look to what the gift from your hand, the gift that restores our soul, Father, uh, Speak as only you can. May the seed find its the soft soul, the receptive soul of our heart, so that you can produce that hundredfold that we all dream of. Lord, 
so honored to know you. So blessed to have your grace and mercy. So loved because you love with an everlasting love. You give us a home. A home in heaven. But even though this world is not our home, as long as you're with us, we feel at home. So Lord, today, Holy Spirit, you do as you feel best. May we give you an opportunity to do great things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You can be seated. Salvation is our end. Acceptance of the Lord is our goal. And once it is received into our life, growth occurs. Now Satan will do everything possible he can to keep the Word of God from finding its place in our hearts. If the Word does find its place, Satan can't snatch it out. So he does all that he can to make that Word unproductive. Listen, in our lives. If you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you're His forevermore. Nothing can take you out of His most powerful hand. Satan knows that. He cannot snatch that seed away. But he can come in to distract. He can come in as an enemy to fight against us. He wants us to be unproductive. Satan will always fight over anything that brings glory to God. Now that's our desire is to bring glory to God. That's our desire is to be used by Him and to be a blessing in, in, in His wisdom and His will. Matter of fact, we want all glory and honor to be Him for His alone, right? And we're, we're blessed. We're highly favored that God would do such an amazing eternal work in our lives. But we know that Satan will do everything he can to make us as unproductive as possible. So Jesus gives an illustration here. He told the parable about the, the seed as it was scattered, and, and the desire is that it finds the good heart. But once it finds the good heart, it is to bring life. It is to bring life. So he gives an example here of a lamp. So he says, if you've received this gift of God, is a lamp brought to be put under a basket or under a bed? Obviously, the answer is what? Hold on, I, I, I took my hearing aid out. Let's say that again. The answer is what? We want to bring, bring glory to Him. We want our light to shine. Light is the creation of God. Genesis, let there be. We are the reflectors of what God gives to us. Others see the light as it shines upon us. Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. John 8.12 says, I am the light of the world. Jesus says, I'm the only light of the world. 1 John 1.5 says this, God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. Can we say this? Satan is darkness and there is no light in him. So we are to be reflectors of the light. If you are to receive the light, then you are given the responsibility to share that light. As a lamp, we are to shine that light. Now, a lamp was a bowl. And it was a bowl that was filled with oil. And a wick was placed in it. So we are the we are the vessels that, that the Holy Spirit, the oil of God, can fill. But the wick is what God places in us so that the power of the oil, come on now, the power of the Holy Spirit, if we will light the wick, the power is not the wick. The light is simply produced by the power of the oil. So what we do is we get filled with the, with the goodness of God, the love of God, the blessings of God. 
And we are, we are so blessed to have that in our life. But in the same respect, we can be filled with the oil, but our purpose is to shine forth light. Now, if God is to fill us with His Holy Spirit and we are to produce light, you would not take that and hide it. You don't cover it up. You don't put it under a, a, a bed. Matter of fact, if you do, what happens? Something's going to burn up. Y'all got me? It, 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 it's going to burn up. Y'all try it. Y'all go home, take you, get you a lamp, and put it under your bed and watch what happens. Do I have any takers? No. It is not simply to be an ornament. How many of y'all seen houses that have all these things hanging on the wall and on the tables around? They all have candles in, right? And then the power goes out and we go underneath the shelf and we bring out all these other candles and we put them all over the house so we can have light. And you go to, if I was to do it and I was to take a match and I was going to go over to one of my wife's lights and, and I was going to light that candle, no, 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 that's not for, that's, that's for show. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Some of y'all giggling because y'all been there. Some of y'all may even have them. Am I telling the truth? And y'all aren't going to confess that, are you? I'm not a showpiece. I, I, I've heard the term a trophy of grace. Well, amen. If somebody else can get a reflector of God's light in me, I'm good with that. Amen. But I don't want to ever be put on a shelf just for show. My purpose is to let the glory of God be seen so that others can see it and be attracted to it. Now, they may not be attracted unless there's darkness. But do we have a dark world? We were talking in Sunday school this morning, and uh, Morgan is helping another church, and she's always playing over there. But we brag on her all the time in Sunday school. And, and we were talking about mercy, the, the beatitude, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Y'all good for with grace? Are y'all grateful for mercy? And, but mercy is not freely given in the world today. Do we live in a dark world? If somebody comes up and poke you in the eye, what do you want to do? That's my pastor. I feel the same way. They come up and kick you in the shin. Are you going to be happy about it? Y'all might be doing the dance, but it won't be the happy dance, right? It is normal in our world. Matter of fact, the world teaches it. The world shows it. How many of y'all are glad the election's over? Right? But isn't it funny how this side is doing everything that they can to tear down this side? And this side is doing everything that they can to tear down that side. How many of you know that a house divided will fall? Shouldn't we come together in some way? And I was, I was really hoping that after the election that there would be something of people trying to come together. But all we've seen so far is just another declaration of war. Morgan was homeschooled. She had a mean teacher. Anybody who knows Sheila knows that's the absolute opposite, right? <clears throat> but she went to Truett McConnell and got her first step out in the world. But Truett McConnell is a pretty good place to go if you want your first step out in the world. My daughter went to Truett McConnell. Um, but now Morgan is out in the world, and I pray for her because I don't want her to be touched by the darkness of this world. But you know, circumstances are what they are. So what she's going to have to learn to do, come on, is let the light so shine in her. Her hope, your hope, all of our hope is Christ. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God's Word is Christ. It is truth in us, our hope of glory. This is not just something that, that is uh, uh, words for the people to, to, to talk about in church. This is the meal of life. We must partake. We must be nourished by it. We must depend upon it. It is the oil of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit always amens the Father and the Son. That's all. He never talks about Himself. He's always highlighting them. And if that is what is within us, our life is not, should not be hidden from the world. We don't just keep it to ourselves. Our responsibility and our privilege and our joy is to live the life, the heaven life, the Jesus life, the productive life. Amongst a group of people that don't even know that there is such joy out there, we don't hide the life. But we do live in these circumstances. When I was studying this this week, um, I can't tell you why, but I stopped and I went over to the book of Job. Y'all take a deep sigh. <sighs> Job. Anybody want to trade places with Job? He had it pretty tough, didn't he? One of my best friends, he, uh, he, he called me and said, Brian. I said, yeah. He said, I'm in Job. I said, oh me. He said, he had three friends. I said, yeah. They weren't much friends, were they? No. And God let all this happen. Yeah. Why would God allow all this to happen? I said, read the last chapter. You know what happens in the last chapter? God gets all the glory. And Job, come on now, it's all the blessing. But it took a long time getting there, didn't it? But the one thing I like about Job, he didn't quit, he didn't slow up, he didn't change his mind, he didn't let circumstances win. I mean, Satan's prance around up in heaven. God says, have you considered my servant Job? Oh, it's because you blessed him. We'll take away his blessing. And Job still blessed and praised God. What do you think about him now? Well, it's because you took all the other stuff, but you've still given him health. You, you take away his health and he'll curse you. Well, go ahead, but you can't take his life. And in those darkest of circumstances, the glory of the Lord shined in Job's life all the way to heaven. Oh, Mr. Darkness himself had to leave because he couldn't stand the glory of God that was in Job's life. Could you imagine Satan doing this? Ah! Because he didn't want to see the light of God in Job's life? How would you like to make Satan go, ah! I wonder how they're hearing that online. He says, <clears throat> there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed. How many of you think the Word of God is a mystery? But when you get in the Word and you study the Word, what happens? It grows in your life. The deeper things of God begin to make sense. The way that you take the Word of God and practice the Word of God comes alive in your life. Nothing will be hidden from you. It will all be there to bless you. Look what it says. He says, Nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. If you have ears to hear, then hear. We should run to this. We should abide in this. Because <clears throat> I may not be there. Anybody else have to pick up some problems? But he can get me there. I may not be perfect, but I'm a whole lot better off than I used to be. 
He says here, take heed what you hear. Take heed to the Word of God. The word take heed means be careful, watch out, but it means to see. It means to discern. It means to perceive. When you see the Word of God and you see your circumstances, let the Word of God find its rightful place. See the wisdom of God. Perceive what He may be doing. Though it may be beyond your uh, highest of hopes. You know, in Mark 24 here, it says, take heed what you hear. But in Luke's account of this, in Luke chapter 8, verse 18, it says, take heed how you hear. Now, those are two different words. What and how. What means who or what exactly. Make, be very careful who you're listening to. You can be, you can be taken down the wrong road. Make, make, make sure that, that what you hear, make sure that it is what exactly Christ is trying to say. Church, have you ever thought you got something, but later on you realize that you didn't fully get it and you learned better? That's what all of us are going through. We go th How many of y'all have ever been through a circumstance where you got mad at God? Y'all self-righteous folks acting like you don't. You didn't understand. How many of y'all have ever said to God, why? I'll raise both hands, right? Because we didn't understand. But Brother Broadus led us a couple Wednesday nights ago in the song, we'll understand it better in the by and by. I may not be there, but God's teaching me some things, right? As a student of Christ, I don't know it all yet. But I'm learning. Those people who think that they have it all, those pe people, they just want to be ornaments hung on a wall to be, to be a trophy that, that others can look at. That doesn't help. I need light. I need light. So he says, be careful what you hear. He also says, be careful how you hear. The word how means in what way. Are you open to it? Are you open to it? Well, then we get to verse 24, and he says, take heed how you do this, because if you do this, let, let me try to explain it this way. As you get the word, and it's given to you, if you add faith. Faith is what you take, where you take the word of God and act on it. One of the things that I have uh, probably one of the greatest needs that I had in my life was forgiveness. And I was unforgiving. And a circumstance happened in my life when I was 21 years old, and I had become bitter about it. And, and I thought that I had forgiven that person, but every time you mentioned that person's name, all those feelings came rushing back. It, 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 was, it, was, a, it, was, it was tough. And, and some of you have heard me tell this story. I was minding my own business in an evangelistic service where I was hearing a preacher preach, Tom Ella from uh, First Southern Baptist Church of Dale City, Oklahoma. And I, I was hearing him preach, and, and it was like God put a spotlight on me, and God said, Brian, you're, you're the one that's dealing with bitterness because you've never forgiven. Can I be honest? I didn't want to forgive. They were wrong. I was the one that was wronged. And I felt, for some self-righteous reason, I felt like I had the right to look at that person and judge that person for what they did. So bitterness grows. And over time, I became more bitter and more bitter, and I, became to, I, I began to hide my love. And it affected every relationship. I became hardened, and I, I could not let you in. I was not going to let you in until the Holy Spirit whispered to me, and I began a track of understanding the goodness of God and all that He had done for me. 
I really wish that God had called me to preach when I was 16. Because I would have gone through a whole lot less trouble. But he had to deal with me at 21 so that he could call me to preach at 24. And from years 21 to year 62, I've been learning the joy of forgiveness. And by the way, you go to elementary school and you learn some things there. And then you graduate from elementary school and, and the work gets harder. We used to call it junior high. They call it middle school now. I don't want to be in the middle of nothing. Then they called it high school. And then I went to the, the College of Hard Knocks and Ugly People. Have any of y'all attended the, the University of Ugly People? How many of you have your PhD in anger and pain and judgment and bitterness? If you are blessed, you may only have one area in your life. But let me tell you what God does. God will lovingly shine His light in you. And once you receive it to that measure, you're able to give it away. But if by faith you use it, He will give you more. But if by faith you don't use it, you don't have faith, even what you have, you will lose. That covers everything in our Christian life. If you take it, if you receive it, if you make it yours and you practice it, God will bless. If you don't, you will atrophy. Have you seen Christians that instead of getting better, they got bitter? Have you seen people who lost their witness? One of the saddest things is seeing someone snuff out the light. Who once was. Jesus says, oh, no, no, no. If you have, you practice it, more will be given. But if you don't, even what you have will be taken away. So let me share something that might be a blessing to you. Look in verse 26. The kingdom of God is as a man should scatter seed on the ground. Praise God for that. And should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. We don't even understand why. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself. First the blade, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. When the full grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. You know, I got the seed when I was 10 years old. And I hid it for a lot of years. and It was elementary seed, right? But as God only works, He can make a preacher out of anybody. He, if He can use me, y'all hear me? He doesn't give up on me. He doesn't give up on you. Sometimes, and I know God is always righteous and good, but sometimes I think I make him scratch his head. He's looking down, he's going, man, Brian, you hard-headed thing, don't you ever get anything? Y'all feel that? And as soon as you get one area right, yes, Lord, bless you, there's another area that sneaks up around the back end. And you got to work on that. But listen. Out of that, in a way that we don't understand, growth occurs. I may not be what I need to be, but bless God, I'm not what I used to be. Mm. The greatest thing that I enjoy is watching growth. I love to watch things grow. If you want to see Brian unhappy, watch stagnant. I mean, I just got all this pent up glory energy in me, and I just want to see something grow. My wife and I have been married 36 years, and I'm her number one fan. 
For some reason, she loves me too. And I have seen in the last week, 10 days, her go through some things. She had a client. She signed to a contract on one day. They cursed her out the next day because Lynn did it the right way. How many of y'all know my wife? She's going to do it the right way. Y'all know what I'm talking about? She's not going to cheat for anybody, right? And you know what I wanted to do when that guy cursed her out? I wanted to take my Bible and go over there and lay hands on him in Jesus' name. But you know what? For a moment, and then you know what I thought? Let's pray. We need to pray blessings instead of give cursings. I don't know how God got me there, but he has gotten me there. I don't take it for granted. I want to nurture it. In your life, he wants to grow a harvest. A harvest of love. He wants an absolute torch of the Holy Spirit within you. Look what else he said. He said, verse 30, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God? With what parable shall we picture it? It's like a mustard seed, which when it is sown in the ground, is smaller than all the seeds of the earth. Did any of y'all get a mustard seed? God could never use me. God could never, I could never tell somebody about Jesus. I could never uh, lead someone to Christ. I could never help someone who's broken down. I might not have the answers. Hold on. I think, he prefers mustard seeds. Have y'all ever noticed the disciples he chose? Y'all know I'm hard-headed. You could have said amen there. I wouldn't have got on to you. But I don't know that I can compete with Peter. I don't know about James and John, the inner three, sons of thunder. But you know, any old seed will do if it's God's seed in you. Right? Look, the story of the mustard seed is amazing because it says when it is sown on the ground, it's smaller than all the seeds of the earth. But, praise God for the but, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs, shoots out large branches, so even the birds of the air may nest under its shade. You're qualified. You're qualified. All it takes is the Word of God and you the vessel of God filled with the Spirit of God. Come on now, let's light the wick. Let's light the wick. Now you're only going to shine as you continually are filled. Every time I get up to preach, I say the same thing. Lord, forgive me of all of my sins. Empty me of myself so that I can be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. May they not see me May they see Jesus. May they hear that which is profitable, that which never comes back void. Lord, as only you can, speak, whisper, find your place in the tender hearts. And Lord, don't let Satan snatch it away because they're in your loving hands. Lord, bless. That's my prayer today. I was a uh, talking to someone this week and they had um, on Wednesday night of this week they woke up in the middle of the night and she poked her husband and she said do you smell that? No, I don't smell anything. Get up. Get up. I smell something. Ladies, y'all know how y'all can do that. Get up. So this great big man gets out of bed. He doesn't smell anything, but he's walking to the house. And he goes to the garage, and he opens up the garage door, and the smoke comes out. And he turns around and yells to his family, Get up! We got to get out of here. Fire. So they get up, praise God, they got dressed, and they ran out in the yard. Fifteen minutes later, boom! And I'm, I can't think of anything on earth that could devastate you as much as losing everything. 
you know, I've heard all kinds of things in my life. Cancer don't scare me. I don't care about that stuff. Because greater is he that is in me than he's in the world. I don't worry about that stuff. But but people who lose pictures and they lose everything else, the things that they they hold dear to them, that's what they keep in their house. They left they lost it all. I just reached out to her. I pulled her to my side and I just began to pray over her. Now I want to tell you, there was a joy in that woman that you could not hide. We were having a moment. I was there to bless her. And guess what? I got blessed all the way from the top of my head to my socks. Because two people were coming together to bring God glory. That kind of light will shine. It will shine. What Satan can take away, (laughs) he is such an idiot. Because if he takes away from me, if he hurts me, I'm not going to run to him. I'm going to run to Jesus. And that's where I find my hope. That's where I find my strength. That's where I find my meaning. Satan is a liar. He will tell us that we can't. But I can do what? All things through Christ who strengthens me. The world has lost that. The church much preached that. We need to let our light so shine before men that they may see His glory. Glorify Him. Where's your light at? Maybe the Lord's trying to turn it up. And that may come with a burnt house. I don't know. But I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to slow up. I'm going to keep on. There's a picture in my mind. Y'all ever seen a wash rag and you dip it in water? I want him to get every drop out of me. I want him to ring me out in Jesus' name. Y'all good? Because everything that he put in me, I don't want to keep it in me. I want to, I want to give it out. The drink offering is where they would pour it in the cup and then they would pour it out. And they wanted every drop of it to get out. You have been blessed to be a blessing. You have been giving the light of God. When we get to heaven, they were, they were not need to be a sun because the glory of God will shine. There will be no shadows of turning when we're in heaven because His reflection will saturate us all. Let us live the heaven life now. Church, let's be the church.